Thank you so much for joining this lunch hour edition. I welcome you so much to this lunch hour edition. Uh, one thing is that uh, I want to be so happy that today I have come to share with you the word of God. It is very important and that is the most important thing that you can do for God. Eh? Preaching and sharing the word of God. It is the most important thing in life. First and foremost, before I begin, I want to thank my spiritual mother, Prophetess Manuela Vaco, who has given me this chance to come and share with you a word. It is very paramount, it is very important. It is very important, to, first of all, to appreciate, because that is the most important thing right now that you are seeing that I am standing in front of you. So as I start on, I want to say a word of prayer as we kick start our word of today. Father, we want to thank you so much for this day that you have made. We bless your name. We honor your name. Holy Spirit, come and minister. Come and be amidst us. That whatever we are going to share, every word we are going to share, let it be a change into someone's life. I have prayed all this in the mighty name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And whoever is online, please say amen. I want to thank God again for this day that he has made. Just being alive and you watching me, that is the most important thing. You have to thank God. Because there are those people who passed on last night and they could not manage to see this day. But for you, you have managed to see this day. One thing, we want, first of all, we have to thank God. Even me personally, I have to thank God that I am here sharing his word. That is the most important thing. Because David said, this is the day that the Lord has made. That is the most important thing. This is something that we are supposed to do, all of us. Those who are born again, even Christians, even those who are not born again, to thank just God for that life that he has given you. The life is the most important thing. Just waking up in the morning and finding that you are alive, that is the most interesting thing. You see, life doesn't matter. Whether you have money or you don't have money, it doesn't matter. God takes it away. You see, that is the most something that everyone has to know. So today... I have come with a topic. We are going to discuss something. I have come with a topic that we are going to share. That the principles of giving, the principles of giving is the most important thing in our life. I am going to discuss the principles of giving. You see, most people do not want to hear this. Because giving is all about subtracting from your pocket. People do not want, about, people do not want to hear about the principles of giving. But let me tell you one thing. Yeah? Giving is the God's economy. When you hear about the economy eh, of Uganda, eh? now this is the economy of God. Giving is the economy of God. Here we are talking about the principles of the kingdom of God. The principles of the kingdom of God is based on giving. God's interest is about giving. First of all, God Himself. God himself wanted to show us the principles. How important is it to give? John 3, 16. He himself said, because he loved you, because he loved this world, he gave his only begotten son, his son, for you to be saved, for you to have salvation, for your sin to be forgiven, for your sin to be washed away. See that great love. See that great, that is what we are calling about the principles of giving. Because he loved you, he gave his only begotten son. Now, this is the principle we are going to look at. That's why I want to tell you that God's kingdom, God's kingdom is all about giving. Giving is God's economy. The economy is of God is all about giving. As we are going to see very many verses in the Bible. Let me tell you, my sister, my brother, there is nothing that is good like giving. Giving is the most important thing in life. If you have that heart that gives, because the Bible is very clear that the heart that gives is that which is blessed than that one which receives. You see, very clear. People who give, let me tell you, the principle of giving it's not about being born again. No. The principles of giving is from the heart. But you might even find there are other people who are born again. But their heart is very hard to give. So this is what I'm telling you. Today we are going to see the principles of giving. 
My sister, my brother who is watching me, this is something that should be plastic so much. For those of you who do not have too much time to pray, just concentrate on giving. Because let me tell you, this principle of giving cuts across. It does not matter whether you are born again or you are born or, 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 or you're you are a Christian or you are a Muslim. It cuts across. God wants us to give. Because he himself showed us the love. Giving comes from the heart. And the heart is love. The heart is love itself. Because God says, I am love. But there are some people who say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, God loves you, but they cannot give. He who says praise the Lord when he cannot give, he is lying to himself. Praise the Lord goes with giving. The kingdom of God goes with giving. And those who give are the ones who are always blessed. I have always been seeing these whites. There are even others who give where they do not know even about Jesus. We have organizations that give. They call them charitable organizations. You hear them grants. These people know just the principles of giving. So the principles of giving does not matter whether you are born again, whether you are Catholic, whether you are Muslim, whether you of what tribe. Eh? It, it is only a principle that God puts across for people to be blessed. Let me tell you one thing. One time I was saying that God puts standards for us to be blessed. There is where I am going to read in the Bible, whereby God says, the poor will always be there. I want to give you an example. In America, actually, America is so developed that for me one time I thought, that according to their GDP, when you look at their GDP, you might think they are no beggars. But let me tell you, the Bible is very clear. It says, the poor shall always be there. But one thing the Bible here says that, do you know the reason why the poor are always there? Now, this is what I want to explain to you. I want to bring the principle, the fundamentals of the poor. The poor will always be there. The reason why the poor are always there, it is because they say, blessed are those who give to the poor. Now, if the poor are not there, if everyone is rich, where, will, where are you going to get the blessings? There is no way you're going to get the blessings. The blessings are only got from the poor. That's why the Bible is very clear that the poor will always be there. They must always be there. It is not by mistake. Yes, we shall always pray to see that there is no poverty. But let me tell you, God put up a principle that the poor must always be there. Because he said, those who give, those who support the needy will always be blessed. Now, how shall we be blessed? That's why I was saying, God is very rich. God is a rich man. He has everything. The world and the earth, the world and the heaven is all his. You understand? But he put up a principle in our life. He says, give a tithe so that I can bless you. Give an offering so that I can bless you. Give a seed so that I can bless you. These were just principles that God was putting in upon our life so that we can be blessed. Because it's so, how can man be blessed? How will man be blessed? But let me tell you, all this, that's why I was telling you that giving is the economy of God. The economy of God is all about giving, nothing else. It is all about giving. God wants us to give. Because he showed us a very good example when I was starting. He showed us a very good example of giving. He sacrificed his own son, his only son, Jesus Christ, for us, for us, for you who is watching me. He sacrificed his own son so that you can be saved. He sacrificed his own son for you to receive salvation. See that kind of love. It all comes from giving. Giving is from the heart. God tested Abraham upon his only son, Isaac. He said, I need that one. I need your son. There is something that God wants you to give. There is something that God wants you to give. Giving is not about only giving to church. You understand? But God wants you to give on a fertile ground. He does not want you to give anyhow. You know, there are grounds whereby are not fertile. You cannot grow your plant in a sandy soil and you say you will harvest well. You need to grow your crops in a long soil that has humus. Eh? Whereby when you drop the seed, it will grow up with the strength. That is what God wants from us. That 
sow a seed, give into a fertile ground. That's why they say, give to church, give to the needy, those who are needy, those who need. Because it is clear that those who give shall always be blessed. They shall have it in plenty. And we shall be reading the word. Hey, some of these things we say, but it is all everywhere in the Bible that if you don't give, you cannot receive my sister who is watching me. So I am telling you today, know it very well that giving is the kingdom of God. It cuts across. Whether you are born again, whether you are not born again, giving is very good. Giving is good. Now, let me tell you, my sister, my brother, is there anyone in need? Is there anyone you know that is in need? Some of us even see there are some people you find really you are seeing that so and so is hungry and you have plenty. Before I knew the principles of giving, I used to love it to shop in the supermarket. When I would get money, I would feel very better. I would feel very good when I have a trolley full of items. And when others are watching me, when I am offloading, let me tell you, when I am in the supermarket and I'm offloading, I would feel very great. I say, yes, people are seeing me. But let me tell you, the other people, you find someone comes and loads a trolley full and he takes the things at home and they begin getting spoiled. You find others, have you, they are even wasting, they are even spoiled. I mean, they, they are throwing. You find the whole dustbin is full of a whole bread that they have not touched. Now, you, are, you see, this is where I am coming. That is not happiness. Happiness is when you buy that bread, you buy too. Then you give to he who is lacking. The Lord has blessed you because he wants you to bless others who do not have. That's why I say that the Bible is very clear as I will be reading. That the poor shall always be there. The reason why they are there because there are a basis for you to be blessed. If the poor are not there, where shall you get the blessings? If the poor are not there. Because they say, I am repeating it again, that... They that support the widow, they that they support the orphans, they that support the poor, the needy, shall be blessed abundantly. Now, if they are not there, where shall you sow your seed? It's like, let me tell you, having no garden, not having no soil. Eh? You want to plant, but there's no where to plant. You do not have the soil where to plant. You understand? So, people who are poor are like sowing. That is a fertile ground whereby you can put your seed and you get blessings. So today, I want to repeat it again, that giving is the economy of God. I am going to get stuck on that, that giving is the economy of God. God is very much interested in giving. That is, most, that is where God, God's interest is. He wants people who give. He wants people who give in a cheerful manner. There is giving when you are complaining. You will never be blessed. Give when your heart needs it. That's why I say that when you give, when you give to a ground that is not fertile, like when someone forces you to give, you will never be blessed because someone has forced you to give. Don't give when there is a need. Give even when there is no need. There are some people who only want to give when there is need. Let me tell you, give even when there is no need. That's when, we, that's when God will bless you. Now, like I give an example in church. It is until pastor comes up that we know we have a problem, A, B, C, D. That is when you want to give. Now, other people want such kind of things to come. They want to give so that other people can see them. God, does, God is not interested in that. He says he, shall, he will never bless those kind of people. Because he says very clearly that do not let the right hand pockets know what the left hand pocket has done. This is the what he's saying. It is only your God that sees your heart. God sees from your heart. What have you given? As Jesus gave an example of that woman, the poorest woman, who gave whatever she had all, said, this is what I need. They that give cheerfully with their heart happy that they have given. They are the people I will bless. Now, I want to go and begin reading the word. Because some people want to hear the word. Huh? Showing generosity and the compassion is important. It is very important. It is very important in our life. Generosity and the compassion is the most important thing in our life. 
we need to practice generosity. We need to practice compassion. Charity is the most important thing in our life. That is how we get blessings. There is no way we get blessings. I was giving you an example that one time I met donors. They, they, they would give grants, but I asked them, do they know anything about Jesus? They were Germans. They said, no, we don't know anything about Jesus. But they give tearsly and they are blessed. They are blessed. That's why I am telling you that giving, it is not that you have first of all to get saved so that you can give. Let me tell you one example that I have, one thing that I have to tell you. One thing that I have seen, that even born again, they have a very hard heart of giving. You find someone, God has blessed him, but he wants to park six cars in the compound, and yet there are other people who are suffering. He even has people in his own church who are suffering, but he is only happy driving a car of 600 million. That is not blessing. God can never bless you when you're doing those kind of things. Huh? By showing you, let me tell you, blessings can only be shown on how many people you support. Blessings is not that you have very many cars, you have very many houses, never. Blessings, because that is what they shall say that day when you die. He helped people, he helped. But this is of, that he has left 20 cars, he has left. People will never read about those. Because already when you die, people would have taken them over. They will not even read that you have left 20 cars or how many houses. People will not want to know that. Because they will know people will begin fighting about them. People will only read of the good things that you have done. People will come and give a testimony of the good things you have done. And the good things you have done are only done by giving. It's not by word. It is all about action. As I will be reading in the Bible, that giving is about taking action. There are some people, you find them, you have seen someone suffering, but you will also keep quiet. Instead of even saying, he has the mouth to pray for that person, he will keep quiet. You will also be beginning to say, this kind of people are suffering. He has money in the pocket, yet he's seeing someone is hungry. Just about that. Giving is all about taking action. Preach the word of God to those who are suffering. Give to those who are hungry. Give to those who, are, who have no shirts who have no trousers, who have no shoes, you have 20 pairs. There are those people who don't have. This is what we are talking about. Giving is all about taking action. It is related to faith. Giving is related to faith. Faith is all about come hearing and hearing the word of God. It, you have to take action for faith to, to work. So today, this is what I am telling you. As we read the word. Now, I will begin by reading the word of Galatians chapter 6. Verses 2. What does it say here? That carry each other's burden, and so you will fulfill the law of Christ. Here. This is very clear. Carry, Galatians, take it very well. Galatians chapter 6, verses 2. That carry each one's burden, and you will be full, you will be fulfilling the law of Christ. This is the law of Christ. As carrying other people's burdens is the law of Christ, nothing else. Because when he was going and the, the, the disciples asked him, huh? when he was talking about love, he said, the greatest principle, the greatest law I live for you, love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's why it is saying that this is the fulfillment of the law of Christ. Carry other person's burden. When you carry another person's burden, when you share someone's burden with you, you are fulfilling the principles of the law of Christ. Now, here, what Hebrews 13, 6, I mean, chapter 13, verse 16 says, it says, do not forget to do good and to share what you have because God is pleased with those kind of sacrifices. Do not forget to do good and share what you have because God is pleased with those kind of sacrifices. You are watching me. You have a wardrobe that is full. That is not pride. Pride is when you give out. Pride is when you give out. People think by changing clothes every day, there is no any benefit you will get. Because those are things of the world that fade off. Give out and 
Just I am telling you from today, try to learn the principles of giving. When you learn the principles of giving, you will get a mass increase. Because the Bible is very clear that carrying everyone's burdens, carrying each other's burdens, it is the fulfillment of the law of Christ. You see? Changing shoes every day. How, I don't know how many pairs. When you cannot give, let me tell you, my brother and sister, you are wasting time. You are seeing your brother has a shirt that has a torn collar. Your sister has only one or two pairs. You are very happy. You know, there's very many Christians who are very happy when they see others suffering. Very many Christians are very happy. When they see others suffering, they are very happy. It makes their day. When they hear so and so has gotten a problem, even they have, when he has the capacity to give, to help, to share, his, to share eh, the burden, he is just very happy. Say, that is very good. There are other people even who just have a cup of coffee. When they hear so and so has gotten such a kind of problem, my brother do not celebrate anyone's problem. Because next time it will be you. As it is written in the book of Exodus, chapter 3, that there is time for everything, my brother, my sister who is watching me. So today you are happy, but the other day you don't know what shall bring. That's why I am reading all this in the Bible. Here, what John 15 verses 12 says, this is the commandment of love. Eh? This is the commandment of love. Giving is the commandment of love for each other, just as Jesus loved us. It is a commandment. Giving, as I've said, is the economy of God. It is also the commandment of love to each other, just as Christ loved us. Nothing else. Huh? He took it on the cross with much pain. He took it on the cross. That is what we are going, we are saying love for each other. Pain. You might be having 20,000 and someone just needs 5,000 to pass through a certain problem. But you see it very hard. Now, let me tell you, if you have and you still find it very hard to give, you are still in a bondage, even when you are a born again. I am telling you the truth. You who is born again, who is watching me, I have come to realize that born again, the reason to why we are not blessed, we spend too much time praying, but we don't want to give. And yet the principle is very clear that, that, that the hand that receives shall not be blessed. We only want to receive, but we don't want to give. This is what is happening with very men of God. They want only to receive and they don't want to give. The only thing they want is to parade 20 cars in their compound. And they think that is the blessing. Let me tell you, as I've always said, there are even people who do not know God, who have them. They have plenty of it more than even you. So let me tell you, God said, do not be a friend of this world. Do not be a friend of this world. Do not conform to the flesh. All these things fed off. When you give, you are building your castle in heaven. Wherever you give, let me tell you, my sister, my brother, God watches. He records it in heaven. You are building your kingdom. You are building your mansion in heaven. If you are not giving, my brother, my sister, if you are born again and you are not giving, let me tell you, you are not going to heaven. You are not going to heaven. The principles of tithing is very clear. Give and test me and I will increase you. Those who do not tithe will not see the kingdom of heaven. It is all about, because it cuts across all that is giving. All that is giving. So my sister today, it is a tough one. Hear what the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 4 to 2 say. I mean, chapter 5, verses 42. Give to those who ask, and do not refuse those who wish to borrow from you. If you have, please, give. If someone has a problem, there are other people, even when they see really someone has a problem, he has the empirical evidence that indeed this person has a problem. He has a sick person in the hospital, and he has the money. But it is better to go and buy food for his dogs than helping that kind of person who has a problem, a genuine problem, humanity. Let me tell you, America has been blessed because they have just learned the principles of giving. 
This European nation, they have learned the principles of giving. We Africans, we need to learn the principles of giving so that we can be blessed. But the only thing when they give us, we only want to punish those people who have been given. You have been seeing people who have been squandering money that is meant for the needed. He at least has something. That is a serious curse. It is has even been happening to men of God. They go, they solicit money that they have orphans, they have needed people. When they come here, they use that same money to build for them sell castles. They use that same money to buy for them sell cars which are very expensive. See this kind of castles. When the principle is very clear that they that give shall be blessed. Now, for you have gotten and you have received that there are people who are really needed. And you know it very well. They are there indeed. And you divert. When you divert, that curse will go on to you. you. You may not suffer it, but your generation will suffer. You might enjoy now. You might enjoy today. But let me tell you, in future, your generation, foundation you are building is very wrong. Your people will only suffer. So, here what the book of Proverbs says. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17. Those who are gracious to the poor, lend to the Lord. Here, that those who are gracious to the poor, lend to the Lord. If you are gracious and you lend, you are lending to God. When you give to the poor, you are lending to God. You understand? And the Lord will fully repay them. God will fully repay you. When you are giving to someone, you are lending to God. You are not giving to that person. When you give to his work, you are lending him. And he will pay you because the kingdom of God is rich. Everything belongs to God. He is the creator. So when you give to the needy, he will bless you. He will repay you. So it is only God that can pay you wholesomely. Let me tell you, my brother and sister who is watching me today, many people do not want to hear this kind of gospel because they don't want to give. They don't want to give. Let me tell you, you are having three TV sets. Even others are not working. They are packed in the house. Even the outdated one, they are all packed in the house. For what? Empty them. Give them out to people who can use them. You understand? Why should you archive those kind of things? Because you do not know what tomorrow brings. When you have an item, you, you know, let me tell you, the technology improves every day and night. Technology improves day and night. But there are some people, you hear them even saying, you know, this is my first phone. I will keep it for remembrance. What are you talking about? Give it out. You will never be blessed. You find someone, this shirt of mine, you know, I remember it, you know, when I was in trouble, when, before I was delivered, this is my shirt, I will always hang it there, so that wherever I see it, remember, what are you remembering? Give that shirt out so that you can get more blessings. These are what people say. Well, you have very many phones. You, from the time phone came, other people, are, there are people who are really stingy. There are people who are really so difficult. They don't want to give. Everything is for themselves. I am telling you, you shall not get increase because the Bible is very clear. Huh? The Bible is very clear that when you give, you are lending unto the Lord and the Lord will pay you back. Huh? There are some people, from the time phones came, they have their phones in their houses. When he buys this one, he keeps the other and puts it in the drawer, even when it's still working. Just for remembrance, give it out to those who need it. There are people who need that phone. Technology will always improve itself. You have, when you get a new one, give it out to another people. There are some people you find them getting stuck. You find a person, a phone which he held 10 years back, he is still keeping it in a drawer that he wants to remember. Remember what? What are you trying to remember? You are only carrying a castle to yourself. Give it out so that you can be blessed. Because the kingdom of God is all about giving. That is the economy of God. You see, every economy, every state, has a law. Every economy has a law. But the law for the heavens, the law is very clear. Giving. God's interest is all about giving. That's why he gave Jesus as a sacrifice. You understand? Now, hear what the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 13 says. Contribute to needs of God's people. 
welcome strangers into your home. God wants to take the ble- God wants to the- God wants you to take the blessings you have received and share them with others who encounter, especially those who are in need. I am telling you, because it says in the book of Romans 12, 13, these are what, this is what was written. Now, I am telling you, this is the constitution of the economy of God. Because the Bible is the constitution of the economy of God. Hear what it says, contribute to the needs of God's people and welcome strangers into your home. Let me tell you people, always learn how to welcome strangers. There are some people who do not even want to greet strangers. It is from strangers where we get friends. There are people who do not just want to see strangers. They don't want to see new people. You understand? God is saying, welcome strangers. Some people, when they see people into their homes, even when the person has just come to ask for direction, he is already shying away. He thinks he has come to beg, or he has come to ask for something, or for food. You understand? That's why the Bible is very clear that, welcome strangers into your homes. Learn how to share. You are at the workplace. Hey, you have pancakes, you bought 10, but you feel very happy when you have eaten only three and you're full and you carry the other and you go with it home and yet you have other workmates with you, you cannot give to them. God wants you to share. When you buy 10 pancakes for 1,000, you have come with it at workplace. Please learn how to share what you have at workplace with others. God will bless you. Let me tell you, the principles of God's kingdom is all about giving. You can preach by giving. That is the most important thing. Those who give will always be blessed. Giving is even more than bless, uh, more than preaching. This word I am preaching. When you give, automatically you activate. You activate the code of God of, of, of blessing you. When you give, immediately God will always find a way of how to repay you back. But there are people who have a lot. They feel very happy when they you hear them say. So and so has 50 billion in account. What is that? And when they die, they leave it here. They will never even withdraw that man and say, let's put it in the grave so that the man can go with it. Do you hear? This man, he has died, but he was worth 50 billion shillings. He has nothing in heaven. You have not built anything in heaven. Your interest was just on us here. So let me tell you from today, learn how to give. Whatever you have, share it with God. Give it to the needy. Those people who are the needy, are the people of God. God wants you to give those people. That's why the Bible, as I will be reading to you, that the poor shall always be there. Even in America, whereby they say it is the first economy. I think they say in America, there are even people who sleep on the street. In Kampala, here, they're not there. They sleep even in the forest. And yet the economy is so high. Those people, God has blessed them. He's looking for people who should recover and bless them. So that God can bless those other people god puts those people specifically for you who has so that you can get a blessing because god has god so i am repeating god so how will i bless man then he had to put principles i will only bless man if he blesses another one i will only bless man if he gives me a tithe i will only bless man when he gives a seed i will always bless man when he gives an offering i will always bless man when he gives a thanksgiving offering to me those are the principles of God's kingdom. Those are the principles of the economy of God. God's interest is all about giving. Now, I want to challenge you. From morning up to now, you are watching me. What have you given out? Whom have you preached the word of God to? Because all that is giving. The word of God, when you preach the word of God, you are giving. Here, I am standing in front of you here. I am giving. From my outermost heart, I am giving out. All these are the principles of giving. Giving does not mean only money. Giving does not only mean closings. People think you only give shoes, you only give tangible things. No, you can give a service. God wants your service. As I've always said, the fundamentals to the reason to why God blessed you on this earth and the reason to why you are still living. God wants you to keep his heritage. He wants you to preach his word to the next generation. As you got the word, he wants you also to preach it to the next generation so that they can also impart the next generation. This is the reason to why you are still living. There is no any other reason to why you are living. When time will come, God will take you. And let me tell you, 
You should learn how to give. Know it very well, my brother. Pride should not take you so high. Calm down and begin giving. There are some people who say, I do not care. My money will save me. My brother, my sister who is watching me, there is an extent whereby there are other items that money cannot buy. There are other things that money cannot buy. There is when you have everything, everything, but there is something that you need that money cannot buy. We need each other. And by the need of each other, we need to support each other. We need to share other bad, I mean, uh, we need to share the burden to each other. We need to solve the other people's problems. People do not want to hear this. People do not want to support. Leave alone the con men. But they are genuine one. Who really need the support of God? Hear what the book of Proverbs Chapter 3, verses 20, 27 says, Do not withhold good from someone who deserves it, when it is in your powers to do so. Do not withhold good from someone who deserves it. Here, when it, you have the powers to do it, you are in office. You have the capacity to connect someone to get a job and you refuse to do it under monthly, let me tell you, God will get annoyed with you. Sometimes God gives us a blessing to help others. There are some people you find he has a job, he has people whom he can help, he has people whom he can fix, but you find he's even fixing strangers. God is not happy. And yet you have your sister is suffering at home, you have a relative in the village is suffering and is educated, and you have the capacity to do so to help that kind of person, and you feel you, you feel very happy when you are helping strangers, and yet you have even people who are close. Ministry begins from home. Let me tell you, ministry begins from home. This one is what I am telling you. It is not bad to give people who are close to you opportunities so that they can also feel good. Other people only want to be the only crab, I mean the only bull in the crab. That is a very bad mentality. If you have that mentality, let me tell you, you are not going to see the kingdom of heaven. Here, Proverbs 3, 27. This proverb was written by one of the wisest men. Hear what he says. And he was very rich, but hear what he says. Don't withhold good from one, someone who deserves it when it is in your powers to do so, you have the anointing to pray for someone to get healed. And you don't do it. Look at you. You have the anointing. God has given it to you free. And they're saying so and so needs you to pray for him. But because he does not have money, you don't want to pray for him. This is what God is saying. You don't want to pray for someone who has a problem. Giving is not only money. You man of God, you woman of God who is watching me, God has anointed you. God has given it to you freely. Give it out freely. Why are you asking for a lot of money to give out that gift which God has given you freely? All these are what to give out. This is the economy of God. That's why I say that do not exactly hold. That don't withhold good from someone who deserves it. When it is in your powers to do so, you have the capacity to pray for someone to get healed. You have the capacity to pray for someone to get delivered. And you don't want to do it because so and so is not having money. Let me tell you, you are a candidate of hell. Even if you're a man of God. Even when God has blessed you. If you are doing that, please, reform. Pray for people freely. When God blesses them, they will bless you in turn. This is how the principle of God works. Bless them. Do not mind. This is the work of God. But God has blessed you. He has anointed you. He has given you the power of anointing to pray for people. As it is given, as it is written in the book of Luke, in the book of Luke 10, 19, he has given you the authority to speak over sickness. Now, he has given you, you are just bragging with it. Huh? You don't need to brag with it as it is written in the same Luke huh? 10, 20. That just be happy that your name is written in the kingdom of heaven. But you find someone is anointed. God has given him a free gift and is bragging. He said, if you don't have money, I am not going to pray for you. Even me, I struggle to get those. Let me tell you, my sister. God just gave it to you freely. How much did you buy? How much did you buy? How much did you buy that authority that God gave it to you? You did not buy it. So give it out freely. So here, God is saying that if you have the powers and authority to do so and you do not do it to someone who is needed you are a cast one you have a problem now hmm, here what the bible says eh, proverbs 3 27 say not unto your neighbors go and come back again and tomorrow i will give it to you 
when you have it with you. Eh? You have it in the house, but you still want to ask your mother, should we give this? I have such a kind of friends. When you call them eh? and you tell them about something, he will say, ah, you first wait, I am going to call my madam. As if his madam is God. As if it is his madam who blesses him. Eh? This is very wrong. Say, ah, no, you wait. I will get back to you tomorrow. He still wants to consult his madam. Now, if his madam is a devil itself, because the devil will enter into that madam, I will not allow him. And if he has not allowed him, see how this person is going to be. And he has the capacity to help someone. He will first enter in the house. Say, begin asking, consulting with madam. The kingdom of God is all about you. It is not about madam. That's why even when you will die, you will not die with your madam. You will die yourself, yourself, you as you. Let me tell you, you will die you as yourself. You will not die with your wife. You see, it is good that ladies these days have learned the principles of giving. But those days, ladies just used to want to receive from men. But these days now also they have learned the principles of giving. Now they can also give. Some of them are still even cast down there. You hear them say in the local language, what are you talking about? Let me tell you, there is no money, or, or, uh, money there is nowhere where a legal tender has been written that this is money for a wife, this is money for a man. That's why we need to help each other. We need to support each other in marriage. And that's why marriages are breaking. Principles of wellness is about skills. It's not about gender. Principles of earning is not about that you're a woman or a man. No. It is all about your skills you have. You understand? But you find a woman is blessed. He begins folding himself, putting himself in that cast that you know said that cast. They don't want to give. And that's why I am telling you, that's why they were still backward those days. It was not because they had left them, eh, they had left them in, the, eh, in backwardness. No, it is because they used not to give. You hear them even praising themselves that sent them such as a woman. You hear. They don't want to give themselves. But it is good one of these days they have learned the principles of giving. They can now give. They can now take responsibilities. But they still find themselves a single mother. What are you talking about, single mother? What do you say about single fathers? What is this single mother? Come back and we should learn the principles of giving. Now, hear what the book of Philippians 2 4 says. That instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for what is better for others. Check out what is good for others, not only for you. I love mom. Whenever she moves out, she sees something good. Eh? She will buy it. You might think she's buying it for herself. But because she has learned the principles of giving, I used to ask myself, hey, mom, but also wasting money. When she sees something, even if it doesn't fit her, say, but this thing is nice, though it is not fitting me, but it can fit so and so. And if it is expensive, she will buy it and come and give it to someone else. That is what God wants from us. Take that heart. Take that pain. God will only bless you when you give cheerfully, when you want it. Huh? When moms move out, you will find that at least she will come back with something and give it out. She will come back with something. I have heard when I was out, I, I saw this. When I was out, I saw maids. When I was I saw cassette, I saw this. You see? That is the love we are talking about. There are some people you find he has all the money, even if he has seen something good, he, he does not want. Even if he's going to visit children and he has seen some, he has the money. Let me tell you, you are saving, you are just <laughs> you are creating too much pain for your heart for nothing. My sister, my brother who's watching you, from today. Learn how to give. Learn how to share, even at place of work. Learn how to share. Give to each other. In chat, learn how to give. On the road, learn how to give. You understand? Give to a fertile ground. Do not just give. Have a discerning spirit. When you are born again, you can have, you can discern that this is a fertile ground where to sow. You don't just give also anyhow. Give and sow to a fertile ground. If you can determine that this soil can make food grow well, this is the same determination you should have in your mind. And see that if I put my money here, eh, I will get a blessing. This is what God wants us to, to adhere to. Hmm? Now, this book, this one of Philippians 2, 4, that instead of each other person watching out for their own good, watch out for what has 
what is better for others. You have come in the city. You have left people in the villages. You have projects. You have studied. You have projects. You have gone abroad. You have opportunities. Eh? You have opportunities that can help. Even you, the reason why you went abroad, it is because someone connected you. Now, there are other people, even when they have opportunities abroad to connect others, they don't want. They don't want to help others. They want only them to be there. No, this is what Philippians 2.4 is saying. You have the opportunity. You have seen something good. Why can't you also call others in Africa? Why can't you also connect others to have that opportunity? To also be blessed. This is what the Bible is saying. Eh? Check out what is good for others, not only for you all the time. For you all the time, you want only good things for yourself. But when will you really want it for others? There are some people whom they have gone through connections. Someone held their hands and took them wherever they were blessed. But for them, they don't want to emulate what other people did for him. They only want to be there. They don't want to bless other people. Never. They want only to be there them, they themselves and their families. Learn how to help others if you have the capacity to help. Learn how to support others. You have the opportunity. You have the chance. This is how you will be blessed. This is how your children. Sometimes it may not be now. But it will be after. Your children will be blessed. Because that person will always continue to say, this job here, it is Ocheng who connected me. May God bless him. This opportunity here, it is Prophetess Manuel Abako who connected me. You see, that word, may God bless her. May God bless her and their children. Whatever we declare is what comes to pass. Because even people who curse us, they use the same mouth to curse us. Yes? See, I cursed the day when I saw that man. Here. Do not have that kind of statement. Only have the statement upon your life. May God bless so and so. He helped my children. He helped my son. This is what Philippians 2.4 says. Hmm? Instead of you watching out for, learn how to watch out for others. Wish us as well. Give. Hear what Matthew 25, 35 says. For I was hungry. Here now, Jesus is coming. And he said, for I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Here now. Because now there are some people who think it's only, we should only give to pastors. We should only give to religious leaders. We should only give. Eh? Let me tell you, there are even other people where you can get blessings somewhere else. Hear what Jesus replies them. In the same Matthew 25, 44. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and we did not do anything to help you? Hear how Richard, because of the interest of time, hear how Jesus replied them. Then he will answer, I assure you that when you haven't done it for me, eh, when you haven't done it for one, of the list of this, you haven't done it for me. I am telling you, for you, you want Jesus to come so that you can give him a cup of coffee. Huh? Jesus comes in us. We are a spiritly, I mean, we are a spirit being. God is a spirit and is everywhere. That's why he said in the book of Genesis that let's create man in our own image. He was mean in the spirit, but the spirit lives in the flesh. The flesh is a container of the spirit. That when God wants the spirit to go, he picks his spirit and the flesh remains. The day you learn to know about the statement which says, eh, from dust to dust, you will never be proud. You will never be proud, my sister, my brother. The day you will come to know that this dust will go back to dust, you will never be proud. You will learn how to give. You will learn how to give. Because all this that we have will vanish. All the cars, you will want to drive and drive and drive and drive more. You will never get satisfied. 
Satisfaction is only in the kingdom of God. Not anywhere, my brother. Do not be a friend to this flesh. Do not be conformed to these heavenly things. Focus only into the kingdom of heaven. And I am telling you the kingdom of heaven, the economy of heaven is all about giving. Giving is all about the economy of heaven. Hear what the book of Luke, as I almost coming to an end. Hear what the book of Luke, chapter 3, verses 10, 11, says. And the crowd asked him, what then should we do? And he answered, that when whoever has two shirts must share with the, uh, the one who has none. And whoever has food must do the same. Let me tell you, the book is very clear. You have five shots. Why can't you give to those who don't have? You are only interested in laughing at those who don't have. My brother, my sister, <laughs> I love this one here. I love this verse. Excellent justice, chapter 11, verses 1. Doing good. Hear what it says. Cast your bread upon the waters. For you shall find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight. For you know not what evil shall bring upon the ass. In the, now here, let's jump to chapter six. I mean verse six. In the morning sow your seed. And in the evening withhold not your hands. For you know not whether shall be proper either this or that. Or whether they both shall be alike of good. Let me tell you, my sister, my brother, the Bible is very clear in the, books of, the book of Exodus, chapter 11, verses 1. Always have time to read this. The Bible is saying, cast your bread unto the waters, for you shall not find it. I mean, for you shall find it after many days. You shall find it after many days. I am telling you, cast your bread unto the water when you give. Know it very well, as the Bible said, that when you give, you are lending unto God, and God will pay you back. Do not give, eh? expecting payment. Do not pay for someone's school fees and expecting from him. No, God is going to pay you from heaven. God is going to send you something bigger than paying the school fees. What you expect from that person, God is going to give you what you didn't expect. That's what it means in the book of Exodus Justice 11, 1, because you do not know what tomorrow will bring. It is that seed that you have sown. It is that that you have given that will save you. That's why I'm saying, cast your bread unto the waters, for you shall find it after many days. Give a portion to seven, and you know seven is the perfect number of God. Give a portion to seven, and also to eight, for you know not what evil shall bring upon the earth. You see, you do not know what tomorrow will bring. It is only the seed that you sow today that will save you. The reason to why we sow seed, it is because we want to store for the future. We want to multiply for the future. So this is what it means. When you sow a seed, you are trying to save your future. You are trying to, to, are trying to secure the future of your children so that they can have food. This is also what happens when you give. Huh? You are trying to secure the future of your children. You are trying to make the future of your children prosperous in the kingdom of heaven. Because it's all about giving. Because the kingdom of heaven is all about giving. My time is up. I wanted to continue. But to when I am coming to an end, here, what the book of Hebrews 6.10 I can't fail to read this when I'm coming to an end. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. For God is not unrighteous. Your works and your labor of love, which you have stored towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and uh, do, do minister. Here verse, verse 11. And we desire that everyone, who, everyone whom you show the same diligence to full assurance, of hope on to the end it will come to the end let me tell you you are a ministering you are giving you are doing the work of god you are serving you are giving to the needy you are supporting the needy yeah? 
Let me tell you, my sister, all this will not end in vain. You are at place of work. Giving does not only mean in church, even at place of work, the way you serve clients is paramount. When God gives you work, eh, he is trying to, he, is, he wants you to use it to minister his word. Let me tell you, when you serve someone well, he will look, say, thank you so much, my sister, for helping me. That one, you have given a service. It's not about money. I am not saying it's all about money. When someone comes, because he looks very, I don't know, he, he does not look the way you want it. Then you try to shy away. He is talking to you, you begin pretending as if you don't want. My sister, that is a curse. It is a curse. Giving in all, you give service. You give service. When clients come, please treat everyone equally. Because everyone was made in the kingdom of God. That one who is moving, even if he has one eye, he, even if he's lame, he is carrying the spirit of God. Because the spirit of God is, moves in the flesh. The spirit of God moves in the flesh. The flesh, it is just dust. This dust here which will end here on earth. When God picks his spirit and goes with it, this flesh here which we brag with eh, will end here, my sister, my brother. So learn how to serve people well. Learn how to treat people well. Learn how to give. As I come to the end of this service to, from today, my sister, let your heart ask God. Let your heart have that heart of giving. Let your heart be softened so that you can learn how to give to the poor. You learn how to give to the needy. People do not want to see needy. People do not want to see the poor. And yet all of us have come from that. Eh? There are some people even when they buy a car, when they see where a place where it is so dusty, that is when they increase the speed of car and they leave people drinking a lot of dust and they think that is right. My brother, my sister who is watching me, those are all curses that you are getting for your own self. God did not bless you to do those kind of things. God blessed you so that you can bless other people. God blessed you so that his kingdom can be glorified. Now imagine God has blessed you, you are using your money to punish other people, to evict people from their land because you have money. That is what God wants. God wants you to support those people. Give them the plan. Give them the way of how they can develop their land. Show them the way. That is what God wants from you. You are employed. You are in town. Please learn how to remember where you came from. Help your villagers. Show if their projects here. Take it for them. As I come to an end, please, I pray that today, my sister, my brother who is watching me, because of time, I want to end here. My sister, my brother who is watching me, learn how to do good. Because that is the kingdom of heaven. That is the economy of God. As I come to an end, let me say a word of prayer. Father, I want to thank you so much for this word. I know for sure the Holy Spirit you are here. And I know this word shall change someone's life. I pray that Lord Jesus, today, let this word indeed change someone's life. Let this word help someone so that he can be delivered, so that he can be saved in this section of giving, so that they can love your principle of giving, so that they can bless others who are struggling, who are suffering, so that they can stop the spirit of tribalism that blocks the spirit of giving. Let love each other, Father. Come and deliver us. Father, I have prayed all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everyone who is online say, Amen. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah.